Um, can you tell us about uh, the genesis of uh, this common project that we have been working on? Well, there the are two ways of seeing it. There's how it actually started and it's when it started. And in my case, it started 26 years ago. So that's a long time, it's a long project. Uh, where uh, I, was, uh, I was a junior at Jäger Lecult and Bulgari had come out with the scuba. So you had the, the Bulgari Bulgari and you'd created the, one of the first uh, sports watches and it had, instead of having a rubber strap, it had this bracelet made out of rubber which was articulated. And I remember driving down to the Bulgari boutique, because in those days there was virtually nowhere you could find them, and trying this on and it was a month of my salary going, I'm buying it. I'm not buying it. I'm working at Jaeger Kult. What am I doing? I've been a, a fanboy of Bulgari for a long time. Now, fast forward. Four years ago, Dubai Watch Week. I'm introduced to uh, Fabrizio Bonamassa. We're on a panel together or something like that. And we start talking. We're going to have a coffee. And I discovered that he actually likes what we do. And he, if you know Fabrizio, he's, he's basically sketching all the time. And he starts sketching. And he's actually doing an HM5 like done by Bulgari. It would be so cool. And we start talking, like, wouldn't it be cool if? And that's the story of my life. Wouldn't it be cool if? And, uh, and we let it there. That was it. Two years later, fast forward again, Grand Prix d'Horlogerie of Geneva, yes. two years ago, I bump into Fabrizio with this gentleman, Antoine Pain, who's just taken over as managing director of the watch division. Yeah. And we're walking from the parking. I was like, you know what? It'd be cool if we do something together. <laughs> Remember that? And instead of just smirking and continuing his road, he actually said, yeah, let's talk about it. I was like, really? And we met up again in Dubai Watch Week three yeah. weeks. This is all around Dubai Watch Week. And uh, three weeks later, and we have the breakfast at the Bulgari Hotel with Fabrizio and Antoine. And I explained to them, I've just created the, the flying tea. I've just launched the flying tea, which is my, my love letter to my wife and my daughters. Uh, but we're not jewelers. We're, we're watchmakers. And uh, Bulgari jewelry is so three-dimensional, the, the Serpenti, the Allegra, all that. I was like, guys, would you be interested in doing something with us on that? And that's when it started. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And then um, it's actually one breakfast and, uh, and we say we go for it. But of course, the, the, we, we clearly op immediately open up to, uh, to Jean-Christophe, who basically immediately gave his blessing. Loved the idea to, to, to again, to go outside of the classic boundaries of the, of the industry. For those who know Fabrizio Bonamassa, but Fabrizio never had sent the meeting without a pen and a paper. So he was already sketching during this, this coffee uh, moment in Dubai, a few ideas around actually the flying tea. And, um, but anyway, we keep it like this. Fabrizio thinks about it. Uh, and we then have a Zoom meeting quite soon after, afterwards, right? Uh, probably well, actually, a couple COVID of hits. Yeah, COVID hits. Uh, and then so the next moment we're all in lockdown <laughs> and we do a Zoom meeting. Yeah, yeah. And it's like weird creating by Zoom, I can tell you. That's, that's really weird. And then Fabrizio continues sketching and uh, brings the Allegra concept into the flying tee. Yeah. And then, uh, then, well, you guys take it from there and, yeah. and work on your side. But uh, to be fair, it's the whole idea came out very naturally. I mean, we, we keep talking about it. Uh, for obvious reasons. First, uh, there is a, a, an immense culture of, of watchmaking uh, of, uh, on your side. We, it goes without saying, but, but with Fabrizio. Fabrizio is a, is, a, is a designer by choice. He's, he's also an engineer almost by passion. And he knows watchmaking so well that um, his first drawings already integrated most of the complexity of, of the piece. I, I think I, I'm, I'm quite keen to, to, to take the initial drawing and, and to compare it with the final product. Yeah, we have it, it's pretty, pretty close. Very, um, amazingly close. And well, of course, y y your approach to those kind of things is uh, extremely positive and, and, uh, and, and I would say open-minded and, and, and probably you're, you're quite famous for that. So what I've been I, doing collaborations for 20 years. Yeah, that's, why, why are you doing a collaboration? There are two different things. One, this association of expertise that leads to something that doesn't exist. I mean, this is all what we, we are aiming for. And it's bringing things that nobody really expected, probably even ourselves, as you rightly said. And then it's the fun of the work that we've had. It's always been easy, as you said, uh, and, um, and it came naturally. 
and it's a pleasure to work together. Every meeting we do, they've always been very smooth with a, with a common understanding of everybody's constraints and necessities. Frankly, it's mind-opening. Your, your perspective gives us different, uh, how can I say, pieces of information, learnings that are enriching our palette of, of, of know-how, and I, hopefully, I hope it happens both ways. Of course. Um, Collaborations are one plus one enriching. equals three. I mean, I've been doing this for, for a but you have to have, both parties have got a real strong creative attitude. If both parties are more or less the same, it's just it's boring. You need to be something, both are in different parameters, but you need both parties to enjoy working together and to want a great product. Collaborations cannot be about money. Creative collaborations are, cannot be an ROI, economical business. And this is why I was really blown away when a company which has 2.5 billion euros speaks to small guys like that. But that's how it worked because it was never about that. It was let's, let's learn. Let's, the journey is as important as okay. the goal. Yeah. And, um, and so it's been a, a couple of years journey. I think we all come out enriched of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the problem is now we all want to do many more. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to temper it down. But um, it's... Um, it's two worlds coming together. I would never have created a flying tea like that. And you guys would never that have created would... a flying team. No. So uh, you get both worlds for one time only, which actually also become the most collectible pieces. Yeah. Because all of us have our lines. Okay, I craft 215 watches a year, you a few more. Um, but you've got our lines. And then when there's a collab in a world where everybody looking for something collectible, it's actually the most collectible piece. It's really interesting. Yeah, yeah. We are creating something which is totally, absolutely useless. That's, we have to understand that. But what it is, it's crucial. How can it be useless and crucial? It's crucial because it's the story of human mankind. It's, it's an example of humanity, mechanical watchmaking or high-end jewelry is the example of hum humanity and artisanship and, and creativity. Yeah. And at a time where you don't even understand how your car works, you don't understand how your phone works, you can't repair anything. What we do is anchoring us in jewelry, which is thousands of years old and watchmaking, which is 700 years old. Uh, and that we're perpetuating something which is beautiful, it's the sign of, I'm going to say human genius, I'm not talking of me. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and that's what I love in yeah. watchmaking. Absolutely. And when, when we guys came together, it was about few people enjoying creating something which was much larger than some of us. Yeah. That's what we do. Flying tea was created as, as, a, as a love letter. And so the, the central flying tourbillon, which is completely vertical, is uh, the symbol of my eight-year-old daughter who up till recently wanted to be a ballet dancer. And, uh, and the, behind you've got the sun, which rotates, which is the automatic rotor, which because the women in my life are the sun and I gyrate around them. And so all these different elements I put into them. And you've got therefore this incredible dome, which allowed Bulgari and Fabrizio told me, yes, finally, I've got some volume to work with yeah, yeah. where I can actually create something, but it's protected. And when he looked at our flying tee, it's interesting, like most MBNS people have a trigger where they see something which I actually didn't intend. And he sees a planetarium. He sees a spaceship. Now, I've done a certain amount of spaceships at MBNF, but this was not supposed to be one. And so he basically redesigned the piece to really look like a 1950s, 1960s spaceship. And you've got this, these, all these beautiful stones, which are this whole Bulgari Allegra uh, concept, which feel like there's planets floating around the flying tourbillon. So redesigned the case, had all this beautiful jewelry, which is their signature. And from there, we crafted the case and the movement and the whole Ujwairi, of course, is done by Bulgari. So actually, the, uh, there are two collections uh, that are iconic collections of, of Bulgari on the jewelry side. They're called Astrale and Allegra. And they are uh, made around uh, the variety of uh, shapes, colors, 
and, and sizes of stones. And, and the, the specificity of those collections is the fact that, they, uh, that we are using stones that are not symmetric. Uh, and colored stones are signature. And immediately, you're right, in me, very, very immediately, Fabrizio saw the association and the way to expose the stones under this dome and to emphasize again what we like, the power of color and our precious stones. Unfortunately, sometimes you like to say how difficult life is and how complicated it is and how painful the process of production and... But unfortunately it was easy. Unfortunately it was easy. So <laughs> <laughs> but I have to say something here. The, um, it's interesting in the collaboration, as you say, you, you, you collaborate with somebody who's different from you. I am completely uh, focused on symmetry. Symmetry is, I, I don't do it on purpose, whatever I do is symmetrical. So when Fabrizio started putting all these different colored stones with different shapes in, just like you feel like they're plonked on, of course they're not, it was a bit complicated for me. <laughs> like, ah, oh, breathe, breathe, breathe. Uh, but that's, that's the whole point. Is we create a product that I would never have created. And in the same time, and, and uh, again, probably it sounds a bit too much, but we talk a lot about acceptance, inclusivity, etc. But that's exactly what it's all about. Accepting something that's not from you for something that you're going to sign. So it's a huge level of generosity. Uh, it's giving, uh, giving away a bit of, of your own beliefs, personality, but knowing that in doing so, this is a trade-off and you're going to get, receive more than what you, what you, what you give up. And, and that's exactly what you, you just said. And, and when it's done the way it was done, it's really fulfilling and rewarding. Because and all of this for only 20 pieces in red gold and 20 pieces in white gold. And that's it, by the way. <laughs>